Ladies and gentlemen, we are now getting started. Please rise for the presentation of the colors. Ladies and gentlemen, for our first speaker, Community Preservation Development Corporation Vice President of Real Estate Development, please welcome Shalinda Bernie Brown.
Good afternoon. As mentioned, my name is Shalinda Brown, and I'm the Vice President of Real Estate at Community Preservation and Development Corporation, CPDC. We are a not-for-profit affordable housing developer and resident service provider. We are the, also the owners of 1330 Apartments, where Lieutenant Kevin McRae suffered a heart attack while bravely trying to put out the fire on May 6, 2015. Later that day, two of my colleagues, Denise Haffenden and our CEO, Mike Pitchford, shared with staff that while the building was damaged, our residents were accounted for and uninjured. They also shared, sadly, the death of Lieutenant Kevin McRae in protecting those residents. As you can imagine, a fire at a community you're responsible for may be one of the worst nightmares we face at CPDC. In my 15 year tenure there, I can recall a few times. Fortunately, no tenants have lost their lives. CPDC wanted to honor Lieutenant McRae and his commitment to protecting and serving the community. When we learned about Mr. Jonathan Tate's organization, Food on the Soul's mission and its initiative to build a state-of-the-art gym in honor of Lieutenant McRae, we were pleased to be able to provide a $10,000 donation, which was presented at March, in March at the gymnasium fundraiser. Today, I am honored to represent CPDC along with Mayor Bowser, Food on the Stove, International Association of Firefighters, and others as we dedicate this gym at Engine 6 Company, at Engine Company 6 to Lieutenant McRae. Next, we have the president of IFF Local 36. Please welcome Dabney Hudson. Good afternoon. I want to thank everyone for attending today. We're lucky to have a beautiful day to dedicate a piece of our firehouse to a fallen brother. I'm sure everyone in this room today has found memories of Kevin as a father, a husband, a brother, a firefighter, as well as a jokester who was always up for a good laugh. Through the hard work of everyone involved in today's celebration, we will be able to remember Kevin's legacy for years to come. I'd like to take a moment to thank the entire Food on the, St uh, food on the, st food on the Stove team, especially Jonathan Tate, who put this together. I'd like to thank Mayor Bowser and her administration, Chief Dean and his staff, Council Members Allen and Che, who join us here today, as well as CPDC, who made a generous donation to make this all possible as well as everyone that donated to such a worthy cause. It's no secret that many occupational diseases plague the health and safety of firefighters. Today, more firefighters are lost per year to heart disease, cancer, and suicide to those lost while battling fires or responding to emergency responses. Although the number continues to grow every year, there are things we can do to help combat this growing epidemic. The first step, a healthy diet and regular exercise. Although many members of this great department give so much to our city, one man here today has answered the call of our brother and sister firefighters and is doing whatever he can to make a positive change in our fellow firefighters. Through his nonprofit, Food on the Stove, Jonathan Tate is doing a yeoman's job of educating firefighters of the importance of healthy eating as well as routine exercise and how they positively impact our members' health. It's no small undertaking to change the culture within the fire service. However, Jonathan's message is spreading like wildfire while his commitment to the membership's welfare has remained steadfast. We benefit from his sacrifice as well as his generosity and ingenuity. Without his hard work, this beautiful memorial wouldn't be possible. Unlike many monuments in this, uh, we have here in this city, this one serves two purposes. One, to honor the service and sacrifice of a great man, Kevin McRae. The other, improving the health of all members that pass through the doors of this firehouse. The impact of Jonathan's incredible work will continue to benefit our department for years to come. In closing, I'd like to thank Kevin's family for sharing him with us and allowing him to be an impact on so many lives in the city he loved. Rest assured, Kevin will never be forgotten, 
and this memorial will serve as a reminder of his dedication and service to the District of Columbia. I'd like to give a big round of applause to Jonathan Tate, who had the vision for not only this memorial, but to the health and safety of his brother and sister firefighters. Next, we have Ward 6 Councilmember and Chair of Judiciary and Public Safety. Please welcome Councilmember Charles Allen. Thank you all very much and good afternoon. Um, pl pleased to be here. Um, I want to thank, there's a lot of people to thank along the way. Um, but these types of efforts, these types of events that try to help honor and recognize um, a great man and a great person for our city just means a lot. Um, I remember as, as a new council member uh, four years ago, just a couple of months on the job, I got the call that there was a fire um, down the block. And I would think it was Kevin maybe who had called me and told me we got somebody who's hurt. Um, and I called and checked in along the way and then obviously got the really bad news. And I remember us being back in this very space, um, trying to help honor who Lieutenant McRae was and what he means to this house and to this community. Um, so I'm really grateful for all the people that are trying to help continue and honor that memory and that person. Um, yeah, I, I, I think about his son, I don't know if you remember, but um, about a month or so ago I was down at the uh, fleet maintenance shop and you were there. And um, seeing his son um, serving our city again just means so much. And it really speaks to what this family does. And so we're really grateful. And we really appreciate the, the way you've shared it. Thank you. <laughs> and of course, to, uh, to Jonathan Tate, um, thank you for your work on this. I had a chance to talk to him just a little bit ago about some of the great things he's doing. Uh, one of the great parts about my job is I try to go visit as many houses as possible and eat a meal with the men and women who serve. And um, it's not too long ago over on Barracks Row at um, Engine 8 and Truck 7, I, I shared a, a meal and a dinner. And um, it was baked chicken with barbecue sauce, roasted carrots, and a pasta salad. Um, it was healthy, but it was also delicious. And when we think about how we make sure that for all the people who are serving, that we're taking care of ourselves, the right food, um, it matters. And then the type of renovation that we're going to go see in just a little bit upstairs to create the type of space uh, where we all take care of ourselves. And as you put yourself in harm's way over and over again, uh, that you have the ability to help make sure that you've got the resources to take care of yourself. Um, and if there's something the city can do to help make sure we're doing that to help, to help you take care of yourself, it matters a lot. So um, I want to thank uh, a couple of my colleagues as well. Councilor Mary Chase here. She's going to be speaking, I think, in just a second. But as the chair of the committee, she has been one of my strongest partners and real leader when it comes to a lot of this work. Um, everything pr from helping us fund presumptive disability works and everything else. Uh, Mary has been a fantastic partner. I know that my Ward 5 colleague, Kenny McDuffie, was here earlier. And then working with our mayor uh, and her team. I think we've got a great team that puts our priority in the right place, that works hard to recognize it's about saving lives and treating the men and women of our department um, as we know that they need to be. And so I'm grateful to be here. And thank you for everybody who's helped make today happen. Thank you all. Next up, as said, Ward 3 Council Member Mary Che. Good afternoon, everybody. It's uh, my deep honor, really, to join you here today, uh, both the men and women of Engine 6, um, but also, of course, the, the family of Lieutenant Kevin McRae and uh, firefighter. Devon McRae, who's uh, with us uh, today as well. Uh, obviously, this event is uh, bittersweet. It's bitter in that it seems like uh, hardly four years ago that we lost Lieutenant McRae in the line of duty, and sweet in the sense that the space that will serve as one of many tributes uh, uh, to Lieutenant McRae's contribution to the fire department, and perhaps more importantly, his legacy of dedication, professionalism, and sacrifice to this community and the District of Columbia as a whole. Now, for those of us on the outside, we can only imagine the um, horror must, that you must engage with when you're facing a devastating fire, devastating heat, how to familiar, familiarize yourself with the uh, lay of the land in the face of uh, suffocating smoke, uh, saving people uh, under all circumstances. And we recognize the immediate and palpable danger of uh, a blaze, 
but there are so many unseen and intangible hazards uh, that endanger the lives of our firefighters, our bravest men and women. The Firefighters Association has been invaluable in helping us uh, on the council identify many of these hazards, and we have tried uh, to do our part. Uh, most recently, for example, we were able to ban uh, cancer-causing flame retardants uh, from the district and other uh, measures, you know, that uh, uh, one w of which was mentioned. Uh, but obviously, we can't meet all the dangers that you face. These challenges that you have uh, beyond burns and major injuries, there's the uh, back aches and the shoulder aches when you move heavy equipment. There's the uh, injury to your knees when you have to take stairs. There's the chronic stress and this deterioration of your physical health after years in the toughest line of work. Lieutenant McRae, as we know, died of a heart attack while responding to an apartment fire nearby. Heart disease, just as occupational cancers, is a silent killer among firefighters. And I want to tell you, heart disease is, in fact, the leading cause of in-the-line-of-duty deaths across the country for firefighters. Um, but it's not a killer that we can't do combat with, and we intend to do uh, just that by making certain investments uh, in good, nutritious food and in um, equipment to help you keep healthy. You work too hard, you face too many dangers, and you sacrifice too much to allow heart disease to prematurely end your life. Just as we, the public, benefit from your presence in our neighborhoods, your families deserve your presence at home. You deserve to one day enjoy a long and fruitful retirement. That's why we're so appreciative of Jonathan Tate's work uh, to bring us this memorial in gym space to Engine 6. At one time, four years ago, the station rang out with the bells of a fallen hero. And now, we're going to have, in addition, a different kind of ringing. We're going to have the sounds of equipment, of dumbbells and weights, sounds that signify significant investment in your health and your well-being. And I cannot imagine a better tribute uh, to Lieutenant Kevin McRae's memory. Thank you. Next, we have our DC Fire and EMS Chief. Let's hear from Gregory Dean. Good afternoon, and thank you for joining us. Before I get started, can we uh, give another round of applause to the Honor Guard and Pipes and Drums for the awesome job they do? It's always a great way to start off any ceremony. Mayor, we're excited you're here. You've been a great supporter of ours uh, from, from the beginning, and we truly appreciate that. We look at some of the things we've accomplished. Uh, the fact that we have O2X and a wellness program, the fact that we are um, getting new self-contained breathing apparatus to protect our men and women, and all, all the things going on. We appreciate that, and we want to make sure we publicly say thank you. <laughs> Councilmember Allen, you have been a true partner, and we truly appreciate everything that you bring, you bring to the table. As we come up there, you've been very supportive of making sure that these men and women are well taken care of, and we appreciate that. <laughs> Councilmember Shea, some may not uh, realize how involved you were when we uh, brought on Presumptive, but we want to make sure we say truly thank you for all that hard work, because it makes a difference for these men and women and their families knowing that they're going to be taken care of. So thank you very much. Always at the end, but never forgotten, is my boss, uh, <laughs> Deputy Mayor Donahue. Thank you, Kevin, as always. So, so my natural partner and the person I work a lot with is, is, is the president of Local 36, Dabney Hudson. Dabney is one of the people who came to us early and started talking about O2X and wellness and how we take care of our members and all those things. And so when you have true partners that work well with you, it makes for a great organization. So again, I want to say thank you to you. Thank you. 
So we, so we have a couple other people here that are truly important. Uh, Ms. Brown, again, thank you for, uh, you and, uh, for your involvement with us, and we truly appreciate everything that you brought to us. So thank you. <laughs> Jonathan, I'm just going to leave you out there for a while. Um, <laughs> McRae family, Trail, Devon family, we, uh, we truly appreciate you continuing to share your loved one with us. On my way over here today, I stopped by at 7th and O and saw the fresh flowers on the, on the box. The community, everybody continues to remember Kevin McRae. Kevin McRae was that person who, who not only was uh, the person here in this house that took care of people, Kevin McRae was the person who took care of all the cadet firefighters, the number of people that have been involved. His touch continues to go on. And so today, we're moving on with that touch. So, so Jonathan Tate has taken the step to say, I want to make sure that we are taking, making the most of what we learned from Kevin, taking care of each other and making sure everyone is well. And we appreciate that, Jonathan, because what you're doing is an incredible step. Me and him have many conversations, and that conversation goes like this. He is here teaching us how to fish. He is teaching us how to take care of ourselves. So I hope each and every one of us is not only here to take a look at this gym, is not only here to have this good moment, but we actually are taking into account what we're really talking about. We are responsible for ourselves, and we need to help each other be safe and make sure that we're all going home to our families. So let's learn from what, we, what happened here. Let's make sure that we never forget the Kevin McCrae's of the world, and let's make sure that we keep their families close to us all the time. So again, Jonathan, you're truly appreciative. You are, you're, you're the angel of the, of the world right now, and we truly appreciate that. So thank you very much. And now it's time to hear some words from our very own mayor of District of Columbia. Let's hear for the honorary Mario Bowers. Thank you. Well, good afternoon, firefighters. Good afternoon, firefighters. It's good to see everybody here uh, to the McCrae family. I wanted to be here to see you, to thank you again for your husbands, your fathers, your sons' sacrifice to the residents of the District of Columbia. I think the chief uh, had the right phrase. Kevin was that guy. Uh, and that is what I heard time and time again in firehouses and meeting rooms uh, and in preparation for his home going, that Kevin really was the epitome of what being a DC firefighter is and being a DC firefighting family is to our city. I want to thank the council members for their support, Dabney, Kevin, Donahue, the deputy mayor, and you, chief for the leadership that you have provided to this fire department, giving assurance to the people of the District of Columbia that when they call 911, they're gonna have professional people who show up, who render aid and save lives. And that is exactly what Kevin McRae did. I couldn't agree with Council Member Che Moore in recognizing that public safety jobs are stressful jobs. More stress on your bodies, more stress on your marriages, your families, your children, and you carry that stress in everything that you do. Our job is to make sure that the business of you doing your job is not stressful too. And so every day we go to work to make sure you have the equipment, the training that you need to get the job done for DC residents. And because of the, just the incredible focus and generosity of the people of the District of Columbia, they prioritize and put public safety and our firefighters on the tops of their list when it comes to doing the things that we need to do uh, for our employees. I couldn't be prouder to be your mayor uh, and to make the types of investments that we need to make to make all of our firehouses and training and equipment needs what they need to be. 
It was four years ago. Like Charles was a new council member, I was a new mayor. And we got the call then about this wonderful human being who had lost his life in the line of duty. We then gave Kevin the send off that his commitment deserved. And today, his fellow firefighters showing up to give him another reminder, to give us another reminder of how we can live each day and honor his legacy. So Jonathan, I thank you for this commitment. And I wonder, Chief, how we can spread this to the whole department and maybe even the whole government to remind everybody that we, we have to be focused not just on doing our jobs, but taking care of ourselves so that we can do our jobs better, but more importantly, take care of our kids uh, and our family. I know I think about that every day. So let us think more, even, about how we can honor the wonderful life of Lieutenant McCray. So firefighters, thank you. And now, founder of Food on the Stove, please welcome Jonathan Tate. Thank you. I want to recognize the council members and the mayor and the chief, and thank you all for uh, coming here today. Before I start, um, I want to have a moment of silence uh, for another hero, Christopher Slutman, who was killed uh, by a roadside bomb while serving our country in Afghanistan. Uh, he was an FDNY firefighter and a former DC firefighter. His brother Brian is a member here at this firehouse, um, and he supported my efforts. And uh, I want him to know that we love him, and uh, his loss is our loss. So uh, we're going to recognize him for 10 seconds, if, if you may. All right. Um, I want to thank you all for coming out today to this historic event to honor our brother and true hero, Lieutenant Kevin McRae. Um, I had to write down what I wanted to say today, because I'm already thinking about getting on an AMBO on Thursday. So that's the only thing that's on my mind right now. I can assure you that, that, um, that the only reason that uh, I decided to go last was because I wrote the program. So I definitely I can go by district uh, government pay scale. Uh, I want to take the time to thank my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Without him, I could do nothing. But with him, I could do everything. I want to thank Mayor Bowser for taking the time out of his busy schedule to be in attendance today. Your presence here today shows your support for firefighters and their families. I want to thank Chief Dean for his support and his leadership. I thank you for allowing this event to take place today. Um, thank you to Marquise Van Zago of DC Metro Carpentry, who worked tirelessly, tirelessly to get this gym ready for the day. Thanks to the artist Wesley Clark, who spent many late nights here at the firehouse painting a mural on the wall that you will soon see. Special thanks to CPDC, Ms. Brown, and Mr. Pitchford um, for your generous, generous contribution of $10,000 to this project. Um, it speaks to the fact that you're not simply in the community, but that you're part of the community, and we appreciate that. I want to thank Chief Charles Mack, who was vital in making this event and this remodel happen. From day one, he has been supportive of my organization and this project. Even with all the things he had going on, he was always answering my phone calls and made my requests feel like a priority. Knowing that you were in my corner encouraged me a great deal, and I'm grateful for that. I want to thank Chief Mark Wynn, who is also my cousin, for his encouragement, for his guidance through this process. Um, I know my father, who spent 32 years on his job um, and retired as a W-5 chief, will be extremely proud of all he has accomplished. Your example reminds me of a core principle, that, that the people you lead are far more, than the, uh, far more important than the positions that you hold. Special thanks to IFF Local 36 and President Dabney Hudson. I can't thank you enough for your personal contributions to this project and the support of Local 36. 
In the spirit of transparency, after being able to fund the whole project um, through donations and uh, personal finances, we ran into a bit of a dilemma. Food on the stove had exhausted all our funding on the gym, and we were unable to carry out the vision the way we had imagined it. I called Danny on Friday, on a Friday, and told him that we came up a bit short and we needed some help purchasing the food and a few other miscellaneous items. Without hesitation, he told me to come pick up a check on Monday morning to cover the remaining calls. I would like to thank the uh, McCray family for their blessing and entrusting me with this project to honor Lieutenant McCray. Um, I pray that this event reminds you how much he was loved and respected by his peers. I want to thank all the firefighters and everybody else who donated towards this project and made this uh, day possible. I want to thank my mother, who's here today. She hopped all the way on Metro Access in a wheelchair just to see her baby boy uh, do this gym. <laughs> and last but not least, I want to thank my wife, Precious, and my daughter, Genesis, and my son, Judah. Um, my wife decided that she wanted to have a baby while this was going on. Um, <laughs> I asked her if she could wait till after the day, but uh, she wasn't feeling it, so. <laughs> On a more serious note, uh, my wife has sacrificed a lot for this event to be successful. Um, and my, uh, God couldn't have blessed me with a better woman. <laughs> I didn't know Lieutenant McCray very well. I may have saw him in passing a few times, but unfortunately, I never established a relationship with him as many of uh, my peers were able to do over the years. Some may say, why would you go to this extent for somebody you didn't even know? And my response would be, because that's what firefighters do. Day in and day out, the men and women you see here today go above and beyond for the people that they don't know because that's what they call it to do. If I take credit for anything today, it's for doing what God has called me to do, and that's to serve firefighters. I'm going to share a brief story with y'all. Um, I wrote a special report last year requesting that Food on the Stove be able to dedicate a gem to Lieutenant McCray, and I didn't hear back what I thought in what I thought was a timely fashion. One morning, I was running on the treadmill, and I felt God prompting me to go talk to Chief Dean. Initially, that didn't make sense because I would, uh, it would require me to bypass the chain of command. Um, so I went home, I told my wife, I said, I felt like God was telling me to go talk to Chief Name. She said, well, go then. I was looking for a little more uh, help than that. But, uh, <laughs> so I jumped in my truck, I began to head to the Reeves Center on the way there. Um, I was praying, I said, if you really want me to talk to the chief, then there's going to be a parking space on 14th for you. <laughs> and if any of y'all know, it's uh, hard to park on 14th for you. Um, as soon as I pull up, it's a parking space right there. So I hop out confidently, real confident, uh, go up to the fifth floor, and ask, was Chief Dean available? Um, they said they would go find Miss Scott, because Chief Dean was in a meeting with the other chiefs. Um, so the lady at the front desk went and got Miss Scott. Miss Scott came out, and uh, she said, how may I help you? I said, I'm Jonathan Tate. Um, I'm assigned to the best truck company in the world. She said, oh, you at truck six? I said, yeah. <laughs> um, so um, I ended my remarks by saying, um, I thought I would come down here and uh, see if I could talk to the chief. She looked at me and said, Mr. Tate, you really thought you were going to come down here and talk to the chief of the DC Fire and EMS appointment department without an appointment? And I said, yes, ma'am. I believe in divine intervention. And she said, well, OK. I will check what he has on, uh, after this meeting, but most likely you'll have to schedule an appointment in the next year, in the, next, in the new year. Five minutes later, she came back and said, actually, Mr. Tate, the chief would like to talk to you. Do you have five minutes? And I confidently said, I got more than five minutes. <laughs> I patiently waited, and um, Chief Dean opened his door. 
And um, in that conversation, uh, he asked me, he said, are you feeding firefighters fish or are you teaching them how to fish? And I told him both. I told him part of my mission is to serve those who serve us, but also to equip them with the tools and resources that they need to live a healthier lifestyle. But it's what he said next that solidified that God will see this project through. He asked me, where can I donate? And at the time, I didn't have a website. Um, and I was just starting out, so I told him I would get back to him. But that spoke volumes to who you were as a leader and as a person. So today, Chief, I just want to say, if you go to www.whoyouwantostove.org and click the red donate button in the top right hand corner, it'll probably get We get paid Friday. Um, so I'm excited to show y'all the gym today. Um, we'll first go up with the family, the McRae family, and the members of this firehouse um, to cut the ribbon with the guest speakers and Mayor Bowser as well. Um, so let's go see what it looks like. Really like I can't even get up. It's a 